Hi, this is JP from No The Lights Over Arkham. Welcome to another Hero Pack Focus, and this time we are looking into the uh, Angel Hero Pack for the X4 cycle. So, without further delay, let's get started. Okay, so Angel comes with a pre built uh, protection deck and also a bunch of new aspect cards for all the other aspects but first off let's look what cards are in uh, Angel's signature set so first off we have the alter ego side Warren Warrington the uh, third Warren Warrington has three recovery mutant trait and regrowth action heal one damage from Warren Warrington the third limit once per round and the hand size is 6 and 12 hit points. On the hero side, Angel has 2 towards 1 attack and 2 defense, aerial and axe force traded. Angel of Light response. After you play an aerial event, draw one card, limit one spare phase, hand size is 6 and 12 hit points. But Angel is actually a, a 3 sided. Hero. So we have the Archangel side also. So Archangel is a 0 for 2 attack and 3 defense aerial and axe force traded hero. And when you have this side up, you also have a, a acceleration icon. And Angel of Death response. After you play an aerial event, deal damage to an enemy equal to that. A Events printed cost, limit once per phase. And the hand size is uh, 5 and 12 hit points. So <clears throat> you really have to be careful when to uh, turn to Archangel, as you will have the acceleration token and only a zero toward. So you should not stay in Archangel for too long, or else you are in trouble with the threat. But yeah, let's continue to the signature set. So first off we have uh, Psylocke. So Psylocke is a 3 cost ally with 1 fourth and 1 attack with an asterisk. A psionic and next force traded and 3 hit points. Hero response after Psylocke attacks. If you are Angel, heal 1 damage from Psylocke or in Archangel form ready your hero. And this can be committed as a wild resource. So Compounding off of your uh, hero aspect, uh, Psylocke can either stay in play for longer or uh, make your uh, hero do more in uh, in one turn. So that's that's interesting. Then we have Adaptive Plumage, and there are two copies of this. So Adaptive Plumage is a 3 cost event, aerial and attack and ward traded. Hero action ward, if you are angel, remove 3 threats from the scheme and confuse an enemy. Hero action attack, if you are archangel, deal 4 damage to an enemy and stun it. And this can be committed as a mental resource. So quite interesting, um, this is basically a, a multi-purpose tool and you can uh, change what this card does by changing your form. So remember you can change your form once per round So if you start in Angel and you need to deal, deal damage, you can turn to Archangel and deal damage with this So really really interesting uh, The cost is a bit steep, but uh, well, it is what it is. In Archangel you will deal the cards damage on top of the four So that would be seven. So that's good. Uh, next up we have Aerial Agility, there are also two copies of this event, so it is a one cost event. Uh, aerial Defense Traded, Hero Interrupt, Defense when an enemy attacks you, if you are Angel, ignore each boost icon and each boost ability for this attack. And in Archangel, give your hero a tough status card and gain a retaliate one for this attack. So that's interesting again, and again it depends on which form you are in but you need to be uh, in the correct form before the en enemy attacks. Oh yeah, and that could be uh, committed as a physical resource. Next up we have Metamorphosis, and there are two copies of this also. And it is a two-cost event, Aerial Traded. 
action change form than if you are Warren Wor Worthington the third, draw one card, Angel, remove two, threat from a scheme, Archangel, deal three damage to an enemy, and this also can be committed as a physical resource. Well, again, uh, Angel seems to be all about changing forms uh, all, all around the uh, hero phase. So, interesting to see how he functions. Uh, next up, we have a Natural Flight, and there are two copies of this. Uh, natural Flight is a 2 cost event, Aerial and 4 rated. Hero Action 4 remove Portrait from a scheme. If you are Angel, this ward ignores the Crisis Icon and the Patrol keyword. And uh, this can be committed as an uh, energy resource. So, uh, interesting. Well, you can play this even in Archangel, but it is best to play this in Angel. Then uh, we have Razor Dive two copies of this, and uh, it is three cost event, aerial and attack traded, hero action attack, deal six damage to an enemy, if you are archangel this attack gains overkill and piercing, and if you are archangel and play this, it also deals three more damage uh, if it's uh, the first, first event you play, as you can only uh, do that effect once a turn, or once per phase. And this can be committed as a physical resource. Then we have a resource card, Avian Anatomy. And there are two copies of this. So Avian Anatomy is a resource card. A response after you spend this card to pay for an aerial event. Return that event into your hand and after resolving its effects. Uh, that's powerful and this can be committed as a um, wild resource. Next up, we have Wellington Industries. It is a uh, once cost support, a location traded. Uh, action Exhaust Wellington Industries. Uh, shuffle one aerial card from your discard pile into your deck. If you are in alter ego form, draw one card. So that is cool. Uh, you don't have to be in alter ego to use this, as most uh, supports need you to be in alter ego to uh, utilize them. Uh, but yeah, this, this is a good way to cycle your either thought or um, uh, damage dealing events back into your deck. And this can be committed as a mental resource. Then uh, the last card in uh, Angel Signature set is uh, Techno Organic Wings. And it is a 3 cost upgrade. Uh, Superpower Tech Trade that Hero Action Exhaust Techno Organic Wings. If you are Angel, ready your hero and Archangel, reduce the cost of the next aerial event card you play from your hand this phase by two. And just to check, uh, it doesn't uh, affect Archangel's ability because it's the printed uh, damage on the or printed cost on the card, not the how much you actually pay for the card. So this composes well with Archangel's ability to deal extra damage uh, with the damage dealing cards. And this can be committed as a uh, energy resource. Next up, uh, let's look at the rest of the pre-built decks. So we have the uh, protection cards and the basic cards to go through. So First up from the protection, we have a new ally Elixir. So Elixir is a fourth cost ally with one thwart uh, with an Asterix and one attack with an Asterix, X-Force traded and three hit points. Play only if your identity has the X-Force or X-Men trait. And the Asterix is uh, response after Elixir attacks four thwarts, heal one damage from another friendly character. And this can be committed as a mental resource. So that's really good to keep your allies or yourself killed up uh, while you have elixir in play. Of course the forecast is a bit costly but it is what it is. Next up we have Siren. So Siren is a full cost ally and two toward and two attack with an asterisk. So aerial and x traded and three hit points uh, response after Siren. Uh, Siren attacks, stun a minion. 
and it can be committed as an energy resource. So again, a bit costly, costly ally, but two thwart and two attack is uh, quite good stats. Next up, we have Warpath, and uh, Warpath is also a four cost ally with two thwart and two attack, and the thwarting causes two uh, consequential damage. And Aerial and Axe Force created, and four hit points. And Warpath comes into play with toughness. Uh, hero response. After Warpath defends against an attack, play an event with a hero action ability from your hand, paying its cost. And Warpath can be committed as an energy resource. Okay, well, next up uh, we have Aerial Intervention. And three copies of this. So Aerial Intervention is a zero cost event. Aerial traded. Interrupt when a character would take any amount of damage from an attack. Exhaust an Aerial character you control. Prevent up to three of that damage. And this can be committed as an uh, energy resource. So yeah. Mm, this seems like a good, good card. For at least Angel. Next up we have Ever Vigilant, uh, three copies of this. So Ever Vigilant uh, is a two cost event with aerial and skill traded. Play on if your identity has the aerial trait, hero action, ready or hero, and remove two threat from uh, the main scheme. And this can be committed in a summon power resource. So nice to have an event that you can remove threat from from a scheme and ready your hero after you have uh, defended it uh, with it in the previous villain phase, for example. Then we have Taunt. There are three copies of this, and Taunt is a one cost event. Uh, tactic traded, hero action. The villain attacks you, other characters cannot defend against this attack. Draw three cards, and this can be committed as a physical resource. So, this, this seems like a good card. Uh, enabling you to get more card draw during your turn and play more cards. Seems good. Uh, next we have a player side scheme and it is render medical aid and it is zero costed, victory zero. When defeated, each player heals a total of five damage from among characters they control. And this comes into play with uh, three threat per player on it. and. Uh, it is. It can be committed as a mental resource. So this looks like a decent uh, multiplayer card, maybe, or works well in a solo. Also, uh, three thwarting for five healing is quite good. Then we have Angel's Eerie. It is a one cost support, location traded. Response: After you defend against an attack, place one fate fatigue counter here. Uh, alter ego action, remove each fatigue counter from here, heal one damage from your identity. Uh, for each fatigue counter, remove this way, and this can be committed as a mental resource. So this, this seems like a really good card. Uh, you can uh, just defend, defend, defend. If you are getting low in health, you can uh, change form and uh, uh, just remove the fatigue counters to heal yourself up, and then uh, maybe heal more, or use uh, your basic action to go back to hero mode. So this looks like a really good card. Next up, we have contam I mean, uh, Contaminant Strategy, and there are three copies of this. So Contaminant uh, Strategy is a one-cost upgrade, Tactic Traded. Attached to a non-permanent side scheme, max one per side scheme. Response: After a hero defense against an attack, remove one threat from an attached scheme. Two threat instead if that hero took no damage from that attack. And this can be committed as entire resource. Okay. And that is all of the new protection cards. Next, let's look. Uh, let's look at the basic cards. So first up, we have cannonball. So Cannonball is a 3 cost ally with uh, 2 thwart and 2 attack and both have 2 consequential damages. Aerial and Axe Force traded and 2 hit points. Interrupt. When Cannonball would take any amount of 
consequential damage. Reduce that amount by X, where X is the number of aerial cards in your hand. Nice, so you really want to uh, use Cannonball before you play all of your aerial cards from your hand, so basically he might not ever take consequential damage if you have uh, two aerial cards in your hand, and uh, Cannonball can be committed as a physical resource. Next we have Soaring Hearts. So Soaring Hearts is a two-cost event, Aerial and Psionic traded. Uh, team up card for Angel and Psylocke, max one per deck. Uh, hero action, search your discard pile for an identity specific event and add it to your hand. Ready Angel and Psylocke. And this can be committed as a, a wild resource. So nothing really special but an okay ability. Then we have a new resource, there are three copies of this, so the power of flight. Double the number of resources this card generates while paying for an, an aerial card. And this can be committed as a energy resource. So this is quite similar to the um, psionic resource card. So just for aerial. So I'm, I'm liking it at, at least with angels aerial deck. Uh, then, last but not least, we have Soaring Acrobatics, three copies of this. So, Soaring Acrobatics is a two-cost upgrade, uh, skill traded, play under any player's control, max one per player, hero interrupt when an aerial character you control uses basic power, exhausts Soaring Acrobatics, that character gets plus one to that power for this use. And this can be committed as a physical resource. Okay, well, that seems okay, but yeah, uh, those were all the cards that come in Hero, uh, the Angels pre deck. deck. Uh, next, we'll look at the new other aspect cards, and after that we'll look at the Obligation and Nemesis sets. So first off, we have ag uh, Aggression card, Bombs Away, and three copies of this. So Bombs Away is a two-cost event, aerial and tactical. Traded, hero action, exhaust an aerial character, control and choose a player, deal 3 damage to the villain and each minion engage with that player, and this can be committed as an uh, energy resource. Well, this seems like a really good card for multiplayer, you can just nuke uh, the enemies and the villain from uh, one of your co-players to help them out. Uh, so, next up we have... Uh, the Justice Cars Eyes in the Sky and three copies of this. So Eyes in the Sky is a zero cost upgrade, aerial and preparation traded. Hero interrupt. Uh, when you reveal a non-elite minion, exhaust an aerial character you control and discard this card. Cancel the effects of that card and discard it. Then reveal another card from the encounter deck. And this can be committed as an uh, energy resource. So we haven't seen a preparation in a while. Uh, the hero that utilizes the preparations the best is uh, Black Widow, but uh, you need to have an aerial uh, character under your control if you want to use this. So maybe not the best for uh, Black Widow, but I think you could use this uh, in an Angel Justice deck. Then we have the leadership card, flying formation, three copies of this. It is a four-cost event, aerial and tactic traded alliance. The players can play, play this card cost as a group. Hero action ready up to three aerial characters, and this can be co uh, committed as a mental resource. So if you build an aerial fighting force with only aerial characters, then this could be really good. Also in multiplayer, if all of your heroes are aerial, uh, then that could be really good. Then, uh, last card is a basic card. Uh, it is X-Force Recruit, and it is a zero cost upgrade. And three copies. Uh, title traded play on if your identity has the X-Force trade. Attached to a friendly character, max one per character. Attached character gets plus one hit point and gains the X-Force trade. And this can be committed as a physical resource. Okay. Yeah, well, 
those were the new player cards and then let's look at uh, Angel's Obligation. So we have Apocalyptic Influence, so uh, give to the Warren Warrington the third player. Uh, when revealed, if you are in Angel for place, three, two threat on the main scheme, otherwise change to Archangel. And Alter Ego action, deal the first player one encounter card, discard this card. And uh, as this stays in play, uh, it gives a plus one encounter card symbol also, and it has two boost icons. So uh, you really want to get rid of this, otherwise it will tax you along the way. Then we have the Nemesis set, uh, it starts with Harpoon. So Harpoon is a minion with one scheme and one attack with an asterisk, root and marauder traded, and six hit points. Uh, Harpoon gets plus one attack while attacking a character with, an, with the aerial trait. Okay, uh, when revealed, discard cards from the top of your deck until you discard an event, take indirect damage equal to that event's printed cost. Ouch. So if you pull this at a bad time, you could die from that uh, effect. Well, it's um, it, it yeah it, it it is a bit worse maybe than quick strike because you could have a three cost event. Then um, of course it will hit you in other ego also, which quick uh, quick strike doesn't. Uh, but yeah, this this looks like a nasty guy, and uh, it has two boost guns. Okay. Then we have the Nemesis side scheme, hook, line, and sinker. Uh, it is uh, it reads uh, each attack from a brute enemy deals indirect damage. Post response after a friendly character takes any amount of indirect damage, exhaust that character, and this can be committed as uh, no. <clears throat> I mean it has three boost icons and comes into play with two threat per player. Okay, next up we have Harpoon's Harpoon, <laughs> and it's an attachment, it gives one, plus one attack and an asterisk, and a weapon traded, and that's to Harpoon. If Harpoon is not in play, so it's a counter deck and discard pile for him, reveal him and attach this card to him, if you cannot discard gate surge. Post response, after Harpoon attacks you, take two indirect damage, and this has two boost so basically, you, if you uh, get Harpoon, uh, this Nemesis set into your encounter deck, there are double possibilities to get uh, Harpoon out. So that's that's uh, nasty. And then uh, lastly, we have uh, two copies of uh, Spear Shop Treachery. Uh, when revealed, discard cards from the top of your deck until you discard an event. Uh, take indirect damage equal to that event's printed cost. If that event has the aerial trait, discard gain surge. Okay, and uh, it has a boost ability, so boost uh, take to indirect damage. Okay, well, uh, Angel really seems like an interesting deck, and as uh, Angel has the protection aspect in the pre-built deck, uh, I'm really excited to try Angel out. And first off, I just need to leave the uh, triple-sided card. Uh, I will use the same method as I did for Ant-Man and the Wasp. And if you haven't seen that video, you can check um, that video. I'll put a link to the end of this video for that uh, spe um, specific video if you want to see how I, I intend to sleeve up uh, the hero card for Angel. But yeah. I uh, hope you guys uh, found this Hero Pack Focus useful, and as always, thanks for watching, and until next time.